please be seated. Honorable President of the House of Representatives, Madam Director General of the Ministry of Health, Excellencies, distinguished guests, colleagues, graduates. This ceremony marks an important day for our graduates, their families, the school, our affiliated partner hospitals, and our academic partners in Cyprus and abroad. The presence of the President of the House of Representatives, Mr. Dimitris Silouris, honors us and signifies the importance of this day for medical education in Cyprus. We wish to extend a warm welcome to the President of the House of Representatives. We're also pre pleased to welcome His Excellency, the British High Commissioner, Her Excellency, the Ambassador of the State of Israel and the Deputy Head of Mission, His Excellency, the Ambassador of the Republic of Ireland, His Excellency, the Ambassador of the Sultanate of Oman, the former President of the Supreme Court of Cyprus, the former Minister of Health, and the President of the Cyprus Telecommunications Authority. From the medical community, we welcome the President of the Cyprus Medical Association, the Interim Dean of the University of Cyprus Medical School, the presidents and representatives of medical societies. Also joining us are the CEOs and senior representatives of our affiliated hospital partners in Cyprus, the Nicosia General and Macarius III Hospital, the Limassol General Hospital, Aredeion Hospital, Apollonion, the Ia Polyclinic, the Hippocration, the Pantheon Eye Clinic, the Evangelistria Medical Center, the Mediterranean Hospital, the American Medical Center, and the Back of Cyprus Oncology Center. A welcome to the President of the Council, the Vice Presidents, fellow deans, and the members of the Senate, Council, and the Board of the University of Nicosia. I wish to also recognize and welcome the family and friends of the graduates who have traveled from all over the world to be with us this evening, but also those who are watching this ceremony through the internet, thanks to the live link provided by the Cyprus Telecommunications Authority. I would also like to introduce the members of the academic platform and to welcome the rector, the chief executive officer, and the three vice rectors of the University of Nicosia, the principal, the chief operating officer, and the dean for international education of St. George's University of London, United Kingdom, the chair of the National Institute for Health and Care Excellence of the United Kingdom, the provost of the Cyprus School of Molecular Medicine at the Cyprus Institute of Neurology and Genetics, the president of the National Bioethics Committee of Cyprus, the Associate Dean for Faculty and Clinical Affairs of Ponce Health Sciences University in Puerto Rico, the Director of the Thalassemia International Federation, and the two recipients of honorary doctorates of the University of Nicosia. From the medical school, the Chief Operating Officer, the Associate Deans, the Course Directors, the Chairs of Department, our Clinical Education Directors at Chiba Medical Center, Nicosia General Hospital, Magarios III Hospital, Limassol General Hospital, the academic and clinical discipline leads, the module conveners, the year leads, members of faculty, and the registrar. MBBS graduates, today marks an important transition in your lives as newly qualified doctors and the completion of another successful landmark year in the life of your medical school. Together, we celebrate your success and your tradition and your transition from academic studies to professional service. In keeping with the rich history and cosmopolitan character of Cyprus, you have received an innovative and world-class education and have gained important international experiences in the delivery of healthcare in Cyprus, Israel, and the USA, which we hope will inform and guide your future career. Your graduation with the MBBS degree of St. George's University of London marks the commencement of an exciting career in delivering competent and compassionate care, in undertaking research, and in finding new methods to extend and improve the lives of your patients around the world. We live in difficult times marked by intolerance, strife, and the rise of nationalism. As you enter the profession of medicine, your communities will look to you for positive leadership and guidance. Over the past four years, you have studied in an environment that promotes tolerance and diversity. After all, more than 50 nationalities and all major religions are represented in our student body. We hope that this collaborative learning environment has promoted the development of trust 
and lifelong friendships, and that these experiences will enable you to act as messengers for peace and as healers, not only of individuals, but of entire communities where this is needed. During your time with us, you have had the privilege of being supported by two universities. As graduates now, both institutions and their affiliated partners take a keen interest in, fu in your future career and achievements, and we encourage you to stay in close contact with us. It is our hope that you have grown to love the communities that embraced you in Nicosia, Limassol, Tel Aviv, Ponce, and Chicago, and that you will continue to visit us in the years to come. This year, we also celebrate the success of our postgraduate diploma graduates in family medicine. We hope that your tenure as students in the Department of Primary Care and Population Health will enable, will enable you to become leaders in family medicine and to be active in patient care, education, research, health policy, and service. It is customary for a dean to provide some words of advice similar to the ones that I have received when I graduated. In keeping with this tradition, I will urge you not to forget to look after and cultivate yourselves too, to develop new interests, to travel, and to share your knowledge and skills as teachers and caregivers. At the same time, please bear in mind the holistic and missionary nature of your calling as doctors. Devote yourselves not only to healing service to humankind, but above all, to elevate their concept of life and the miracle of mind, body, and spirit in unison that's spreading the light of truth. On behalf of the faculty and staff, our warm congratulations to you on your achievement and to your families and friends who have supported you through the many challenges of being an undergraduate or postgraduate medical student. It is my pleasure now to introduce Professor Filipos Puyutas, Rector of the University of Nicosia. Thank you. Honorable President of the House of Representatives, Excellencies, distinguished guests, dear colleagues, dear graduates, welcome to the third graduation ceremony of the University of Nicosia Medical School. Our school has now completed six years of operation in which it has established itself as a reputable and leading school of international standing. Through the academic collaboration between our university and St. George's University of London, the school has demonstrated what academic institutions can achieve through a dynamic internationalization and global outreach strategy. This partnership and other international initiatives, such as joint degrees with well-known universities and online education, have been particularly important in supporting our government's vision to establish Cyprus as an international education and research hub. They have also helped to establish our university, not only as the largest university in Cyprus, but also, more importantly, as a leading uh, regional academic center with more than 11,000 students from over 70 countries, and with staff, partners, and offices in 18 cities outside Cyprus, including New York, Chicago, London, Tel Aviv, and Athens. During today's graduation ceremony, St. George's University of London will bestow the Bachelor of Medicine and Bachelor of Surgery degrees. It will also bestow the postgraduate certificates in healthcare and biomedical education on our faculty members who have successfully completed the program requirements as part of their professional development as medical educators. The University of Nicosia will bestow the postgraduate diplomas in family medicine to practicing doctors who have completed the requirements for the degree. Finally, I'm very proud that today we will award honorary doctoral degrees to Professor Peter Kobelman from the UK and Professor Ziv Rothstein from Israel. I would like to congratulate all and express my sincere thanks and gratitude to all faculty members and staff of our medical school for contributing to the schools and by extension to the university's success and international standing. Dear graduates, today's graduation marks an important milestone in your life. The academic award bestowed on you is an endorsement of your intellectual capabilities and a reward for your hard work during your studies. 
the university community, your family, friends, loved ones, and all those who supported you along the way are all very proud of your achievement. The knowledge, skills, and competences you have gained and the qualification you have earned provide you with a solid basis for succeeding your career in medicine and for pursuing further studies. As doctors, you will be required to embody the skills of a scholar, a scientist, a practitioner, and a professional. I am confident that the university's stimulating multicultural environment, the innovative and patient-centered curriculum, as well as the numerous outreach activities, helped to broaden your horizons, led to greater understanding and appreciation of different cultures, and brought an ability to view and perceive things from diverse perspectives. Let us not forget that we live in a globalized, knowledge-based society that will be dominated by the fourth industrial revolution. Technology has broken all kinds of geographical and time barriers and has transformed the way we live, work, and socialize. Changes happen at an accelerated pace, and knowledge is no longer the sole core asset for professional success, as it becomes obsolete and outdated and transplanted at regular intervals. You should be very proud of the academic degree you have earned. At the same time, you should bear in mind that in a such fast-changing environment, you will need to embrace active, self-directed, and lifelong learning as a means of maximizing your degree's potential. Also, always remember what you have learned through problem-based learning. Knowledge is not something that is passively transmitted. Knowledge is created through continuous inquiry, critique, and research. Your profession and the intense competition you will face in our materialistic-driven society will present you with many ethical dilemmas. The challenge to succeed in a competitive and often times antagonistic environment while retaining professional and personal integrity and adhering to core ethical values is indeed a tough but essential proposition. I am certain that you will not forsake defending your principles and beliefs. I'm also certain that you will actively contribute to our society, help your patients and fellow citizens in need, protect the environment, engage in philanthropic activities, and promote culture and civilization. <laughs> Dear graduates, today you are joining our ever-growing alumni family. The award bestowed on you ties you to the university, your fellow graduates, and all other members of the university community. I would like to warmly welcome you to the family and encourage you to be active members. Do keep in touch, share with us your thoughts and ideas, as well as your professional success and endeavors. Please also let us know where you live and work so we know where to locate the best doctors around. We are all so very proud of you. My warmest congratulations. Thank you. It is now my pleasure to introduce my colleague, Professor Jenny Hayam, Principal of St. George's University of Lando. Thank you very much and welcome to everybody. I'd like really now to speak directly to the graduates because I'm sure this is a momentous time for you. You've laid down so many memories, and if you cast your mind back to when you began, I'm sure you'd all say that you'd grown. Of course, you've been supported a lot by one another, by staff, but of course, the people here in the audience, your parents and family. And I can tell you, you probably have no idea how relieved they are that you've got to this stage. <laughs> and indeed, the prospect of potentially you creeping towards coming off the payroll really is. <laughs> You're now going to step in from the simulated, supported world into that of the real world. And there are many positives to that, but also the stakes have risen. I'll never forget myself when I was doing my first six-month job having graduated. It was a busy job in a hospital where I was unsupported and tearing around the wards at two o'clock in the morning. And there was a frail 
80-year-old woman with rheumatoid arthritis who developed a fever. I drew up antibiotics. I had a 20 mil syringe. I connected it and squirted the contents. One mil in the syringe, 19 mils in the patient, and I said to her, you don't have any allergies, do you? <laughs> to which, of course, she said, I do. It was no joke. That catastrophic moment when my world fell apart, my pulse rate, my guts, everything, it was an awful moment within my medical career. Of course, you won't do the same, one hopes, because you're better trained and better supported. Your career has begun and you'll be very busy. You'll go on time management programs and they will say to you, you've got to learn to say no. I would say that's true, but most good things in my career have come from when I've said yes. So I think you have to say yes quite a bit too and stay open to alternatives and pathways that come your way. You'll do a lot of running around, saving lives, making a huge difference. But there are also quieter and more amusing rewards within medicine that aren't all dramas. I've always rather enjoyed the personal element of it. And for many years, I was a high-risk obstetrician and during my training, of course, there were great dramas at moments on the labour ward, but also, to my mind, quite amusing things too. For example, you see all of society laid bare in front of you during labour. And I will never forget the couple, and she and he were two of the poshest people I'd ever known. She wore her pearls and a blouse that was cocked up round her neck for the entirety of the labour and had an epidural which was absolutely numbed her from the first contraction to the last. The husband was a rather foppish, petulant man, not unlike Hugh Grant. Sorry, Hugh Grant, if there's any relatives in the audience. <laughs> and she'd come to fully dilated and he stood and said, well, could you just try and push a little bit? Because after all, I've already fitted the baby seat in the back of the Range Rover. <laughs> or equally the moments when there have been great dramas at delivery and you're at the bottom end and you're perhaps doing a couple of stitches and you hear the quiet conversations between perhaps the mother or the partner and the mother around their new arrival. And I was always amazed at that stage how you could almost predict the outcome for that child from taking the child to water and trying to get, teach it words from the very beginning. So, oh, look at him. He's going to be a fighter. I can tell he's going to fight. Look at those ears. Just moments, but you sort of could get insight into the future. So be proud of your achievements and sustain your pride in the medical profession. Because I promise you, although it feels sometimes that Google is more expert than you, and your patients may quote that at you, you are the people who are there to help them. And finally, before I finish, I should complete the story of that poor 80-year-old woman who I did such a disservice to. I ran to the drug cupboard I drew up lots of adrenaline and hydrocortisone and anything else I could think of and stayed beside her and absolutely nothing happened. I was saved by statistics. All those people who say they're allergic to something are in fact not allergic at all. But I tell you, I don't recommend my gamble. And it was an episode like the rest of my career that certainly taught me something that I've never forgotten. So today is your day, and we look forward to welcoming you on the stage. <clears throat> Honoured guests, colleagues, it's both an honour and a privilege to introduce the graduating class of 2017 on this day 
one of celebration for the medical school. Graduates, congratulations on your achievement. This is indeed a very proud moment for you and your families. It is just reward for years of hard work and dedication, a unique transition and a true academic and professional milestone. On behalf of the University of Nicosia Medical School, I present the following candidates for the degrees of Bachelor of Medicine and Bachelor of Surgery of St. George's Hospital Medical School, a constituent college of the University of London. <clears throat> Abu Jauda Karen. Al Hilani Michel. Ayub Antoine Maurice. Bakker Mayan. Castromo Ines Amelia. Shaloup Xavier. Chan Jeanette. Chong Jacqueline Mary. Davis Robert Allen. Dayeva Julia. Diab Hassan. Dimasi Ahmad Bilal. Dulai Jaskiran Kaur. Ella Trash Rima. <laughs> Farah Hani. <laughs> Faraj Paul. Begali Marian. Fitzgibbon Jason Thomas. Friar Vincent Lucas David. Gazarians Naris Talish. <laughs> Hajihari Michael George. <laughs> Hamze Hassan. Higgins, Katrin Ann. Itani Muhyiddin.
Jangada Correa Nicole Andrea. Joshi Sima. Katsieris Nikolaos. Cornelson Jacqueline Elaine. Lambracos Angela. Liotta Elizabeth Savica. Lum Whitney. Malas Sadek. Mastroyani Brook. Matiti Luso. Mavru Athina. McBurney, Caroline Ann. Ing Gilbert Hensley. O'Connell, Joshua Stephen. Omoni Omojazola Elizabeth. Patel Mahul Kumar. Petrobulus Harry. Prasher Priya. Rana Singhe Ushan Ashley. Rizgala George. Shepherd Adam Ryan. Stavropoulos Amalia Vicky. Serdis Constantino Peter. Tio Leon Lung. Tinawo Takutsua. Toku David Vincent. Tumbas Loizos Panayodi. Toure Amir Abbas. Varaste Badri Amin.
Visvaratnam Pathyapan Ganeshalingam. With us, Mitchell Ryan. Wojtuk Lyndon James. Yahya Reem. Yo Tian Ming. Yunis Ahmad. That concludes the presentation of the degrees of Bachelor of Medicine and Bachelor of Surgery of St. George's Hospital Medical School. I now give the floor to Dr. Joseph Joseph, Clinical Associate Professor of Medicine. Distinguished guests, dear colleagues, dear graduates, last year, upon recommendation of uh, the faculty, the Senate of the University of Nicosia conferred the degree of Doctor of Science, uh, honoris causa, to Peter Kopelman. Professor Kopelman was unable to join us last year, but we're very happy to have him with us this year. In his capacity as Principal of St. George's from 2008 to 2015, he was instrumental in the creation of the University of Nicosia Medical School in 2011. He has an outstanding career as clinician, academic, and researcher, and his research in diabetes and obesity has led to the establishment of patient care services recognized in London and, and all of the UK. In his capacity as chair and member of a multitude of health and educational boards, Professor Kopelman has played a prominent role in policy making both in national health service and in medical education. Rector, I request that by the authority of Senate, you admit Peter Kopelman to the degree of Doctor of Science, honoris causa. Now, Professor Peter McCrory, Dean of Medical Education, will present the graduates of the Postgraduate Certificate in Healthcare and Biomedical Education. Distinguished guests, dear colleagues, it is my pleasure to tell you about one of our faculty members who, like our medical students, or rather graduates, uh, has successfully completed a rather different qualification the St. George's Postgraduate Certificate in Healthcare and Biomedical Education, mercifully abbreviated to the PG Cert HBE. <laughs> the course is taken part-time over a period of up to two years and involves a number of activities. Attending a plethora of workshops uh, for our Cypriot colleagues, I hope you notice I used a Greek word there, a Cypriot word, sorry. <laughs> attending a plethora of workshops on a wide range of aspects of medical education, including educational theory, small and large group teaching, embedding diversity in the curriculum, giving feedback to students, assessment and curriculum design. Having their performance in large and small groups teaching sessions reviewed by students and peers, carrying out a number of assignments, going by catchy titles such as ORP, Observation and Review of Practice, and RPOT, Reciprocal Peer Observation of Teaching, and completing a reflective portfolio about their whole experience. It has been hard work for our faculty member, particularly since she is a busy clinician and is heavily involved in teaching and assessment. But I know she has learned a lot from taking part 
And this has been to the benefit of our students as well as a result of her improved teaching skills and her understanding of how students learn. So who am I talking about? Someone you all know very well, someone who lives and works clinically in Larnaca and who commutes to Nicosia for all her teaching sessions. So without further ado, and on behalf of the University of Nicosia Medical School, may I present Dr. Evie Vassiliou for the Postgraduate Certificate in Healthcare and Biomedical Education of St. George's Hospital Medical School, a constituent college of the University of London. I knew you'd be pleased. That concludes the presentation of the Postgraduate Certificate in Healthcare and Biomedical Education of St. George's Hospital Medical School. And now I'd like to pass on to Dr. Urania Kolikotroni, who's the course director of the Postgraduate Diploma in Family Medicine, and she will now present the graduates of that programme. Thank you. Distinguished guests, dear colleagues, dear graduates, it gives me great pleasure to introduce to you the graduates of the University of Nicosia Postgraduate Diploma in Family Medicine. The Postgraduate Diploma in Family Medicine is an exit award of the Masters in Family Medicine, a program offered by the Department of Primary Care and Population Health. It is a, stru a structured, continuing professional development program that aims to enhance knowledge, advance clinical skills, and develop the professionalisms of clinicians towards a comprehensive, holistic, and evidence-based approach to primary care practice. As of this academic year, the MSc in Family Medicine program is offered using blended learning, a format of delivery compatible with the professional and personal life commitments of physicians, but also effective for adult learners. This program has undergone a successful validation by our partner university, St. George's University of London, and is concurrently awarded by both institutions. The first cohort of students are expected to graduate in the next academic year. The Department of Primary Care and Population Health has also been accredited to develop and deliver the Cyprus MRCGP International Examination. Successful completion of this multi-component exam by eligible students of the MSc in Family Medicine program leads to international membership of the Royal College of General Practitioners of the United Kingdom. This is a major achievement for the medical school and signifies the high quality assurance processes employed in the delivery and assessment of its programs. The graduating students have worked hard and successfully achieved their goals. I sincerely hope that this course has strengthened their practice of family medicine and prepared them for significant roles in the evolution of the healthcare system in Cyprus and beyond. Without further delay, and on behalf of the University of Nicosia Medical School, may I present the following candidates for the postgraduate diploma in family medicine of the University of Nicosia. Dr. Ionescu, Cristina. <laughs> Unfortunately, due to work commitments, uh, Dr. Nektaria Ftimiu has not been able to attend this ceremony. On behalf of the school, I would like to congratulate both graduates on their achievements and wish them success in their future careers. This concludes the presentation of the Postgraduate Diploma in Family Medicine of the University of Nicosia. I now give the floor to Dr. Banos Ekonomou, Chair of the Department of Surgery. Distinguished guests, dear colleagues, dear graduates, upon the recommendation of the faculty, the Senate of the University of Nicosia conferred the degree of Doctor of Science honoris causa to Zev Rothstein in recognition of his outstanding contribution to science, education, and patient care. Professor Zev Rothstein is Director General of Hadassah Medical Organization in Israel. As Director General of Sheba Medical Center for 12 years, from 2004 to 2016, Professor Rothstein was instrumental in founding 
in the founding of the first medical school in Cyprus and establishing the collaboration between the University of Nicosia Medical School, Chiba Medical Center, and St. George's University of London for delivering the first medical degree in Cyprus, the St. George's MBBS Graduate Entry Program. Professor Rothstein is credited with almost 100 original publications, abstracts, and case studies in scientific and professional journals. In addition to being a specialist in health policy, Professor Rothstein plays a vital role in the education of physicians and other health professionals and in planning medical institutions around the world. Rector, I request that by the authority of Senate, you admit Zef Rothstein to the degree of Doctor of Science honoris causa. Professor David Haslam, Chairman of the National Institute for Health and Care Excellence in the United Kingdom and Professor of General Practice, will now deliver the keynote speech. Honored guests, graduates, colleagues, families, friends, what a great day. New graduates, you can feel so proud. Your families will all be feeling so proud. Indeed, they'll probably be feeling quite a bit emotional and tearful as you were awarded your degrees and your diplomas. I certainly spotted a few tears being wiped away, and I'm not surprised. After all, to start your careers was an achievement. To finish, to graduate, to begin your lifelong career as a doctor, or to take a major further step in your life in medicine is a truly important moment in your lives, one that you will never ever forget. And I cannot begin to tell you what an honor it is for me to be here to share this day with you. This university, this course is so proud to have you as our graduates. And as you know, as you finish one journey, you start another. You have little idea what the future will hold for you when I look back at my own graduation from medical school all those years ago, I had no idea, not a tiny clue, what the future would hold. I knew that I wanted to be a family doctor, a general practitioner. It's always been clear to me that the role of the generalist is one of the most complicated in medicine. And all the evidence from international studies shows that high quality family medicine is absolutely critical to the overall quality of healthcare systems. Indeed, the Director General of the World Health Organization has said, and I quote, decades of experience tell us that a primary healthcare approach is the most efficient, fair, and cost-effective way to organize a healthcare system. And when countries at the same level of economic development are compared, those where healthcare is organized around the tenets of primary healthcare produce higher level of health for the same investment. So I really, really hope that many of you will become primary care doctors. After all, as I explained in a lecture I gave last night, I do believe that medical care in the future will have a continuing major need for generalism because of the increase in multimorbidity, people who have multiple ongoing health problems. Our populations are getting older. Indeed, life expectancies, expectancy in most countries is increasing at an astonishing rate. In the UK, NHS England recently calculated that life expectancy is increasing by an astonishing five hours a day. That means for every hour that you live, your life expectancy goes up by 12 minutes. 
I had to check that sum. It sounds ridiculous. Uh, it's so extraordinary. Uh, but it does mean that a, a couple of hours sit, spent here this afternoon and you've gained nearly half an hour of extra lifetime. And what this means, the relevance of this, apart from the astonishing statistics, is that people are now living with conditions that only a few years ago they would have died from. And so inevitably, multimorbidity will become ever more an issue for our healthcare systems. And patients with five or six or seven or even eight major long-term conditions will become commonplace. And caring for them and understanding them as complex human individuals will become an increasingly important challenge. And that's why I'm really proud that this university offers the MSc in family medicine, uh, which can help support and develop the skills of general practitioners. After all, family medicine, as I've said, is the cornerstone of any modern healthcare system. And I'm particularly proud to have been a family doctor. But for me, and looking back on my own graduation day, other than knowing that I'd be a family doctor, I had no possible way of knowing what else my career would bring. On the day I graduated, I would have been astonished if I'd have known it would have taken me around the world. Even on one memorable occasion, giving lectures on a cruise ship in the Antarctic, meeting royalty and ministers from numerous different countries, even to addressing the World Health Assembly in Geneva, and all the other astonishing experiences that being a doctor has brought me. But the simple truth is, they were great fun, but they were much less important than the real human moments of my life as a doctor. Being there when my patients were born and when they died, and to be there at moments of great happiness and moments of intense sadness, and to share their joy and their sorrow, and just to be part of their lives. It is such a privilege. The great American physician Don Berwick said in a lecture that I was at a few years ago, as doctors, we are fortunate. He said, still it's our privilege to enter into the dark and tender places of people's lives, where still trust abounds when human beings turn to us in their pain. Extraordinary words. But I think medicine is an extraordinary career. Your career will be entirely different to mine. Every one of you will have a, have a different career. That's half the fun. And as I said, you can have no idea what's ahead of you. The great thing about a medical degree is the opportunity that it gives you, whether it's pathology or neonatal intensive care, child psychiatry, gynecology, general practice, ophthalmology, the options are almost infinite. You'll find your own way. And when I look back on my life and my career, I'm absolutely certain that my time at medical school taught me one of the great lessons of my life and one which has had a major impact on my career. It was our first clinical session with a real patient. A group of five of us were being taught about a heart valve problem, mitral stenosis. For the non-medics in the audience and for the medics who weren't paying attention at the time, uh, mitral stenosis is a narrowing of the mitral valve in the heart between the left atrium and ventricle, which causes a flow murmur, a noise you can detect with a stethoscope. So our, our tutor, first of all, described the sound then played us a recording of the sound, and then he drew it on the blackboard. This is how old I am, a blackboard with chalk. He drew the pattern of the sound, the opening snap, the different sounds that you can hear. And when we all really understood what mitral stenosis sounded like, he wheeled in our first ever patient. And in turn, we borrowed his stethoscope, and we listened to her heart, to the different noises, the opening snap, and the distinctive murmur. And when we'd done, he asked if we had any questions. We said we hadn't. He offered us the chance to listen again. We declined. We said we were 100% happy. Uh, he wanted to be sure, do we really feel we'd now clocked the whole issue of mitral stenosis for our career? And we said yes. And he wheeled the patient out of the room. And then one final time, he checked that we really were confident. And we were, at which point he took his stethoscope, the one he'd loaned us, and he unscrewed the end, and he pulled out a plug of cotton wool. None of us had heard anything. We'd all been much, much too embarrassed to say. He went on, today's lesson wasn't about mitral stenosis at all. 
He said it was about honesty, about being able to say when you don't know, about not being embarrassed to ask, about not being frightened about looking ignorant. If you don't understand something, for heaven's sake, ask. It was a fabulous lesson. I think it helped make my career. I've lost count of the times that I've asked something after a presentation or lecture that I didn't understand, and people come up to me and say, I'm really glad you asked that, because I didn't get it, but I didn't like to say. So I commend it to you absolutely as a rule for life. Along with one other piece of advice, I think the saddest two words in any language are, if only. So when faced with an opportunity, the test I've always applied is what I call my deathbed test. I am, imagine myself, I'm a real optimist, I imagine myself at the age of 99 looking back on my life and I ask myself, would I have wished I'd given a shot and tried whatever the opportunity was? So faced with an opportunity, an in, a different but interesting job, um, a promotion, the potential to be elected to a role, well, if you try and you fail, that's life, you tried. But if you don't try, and I know Professor Hyam said much the same thing, if you don't try, you'll never know, and you'll spend the rest of your life saying, if only. Which is how I ended up doing some of the fascinating roles that I've done in my career. I didn't plan a career. I would have never guessed that it would turn out the way it has, or that I'd be here today. It sort of makes sense in retrospect. It certainly wasn't what I planned. So your careers will be fascinating too. Enjoy it. It's a remarkable privilege, and you've earned it. And so to all the new graduates here today, my warmest congratulations. Have a great life, and please go on asking the awkward questions. Thank you. So now it's over to you again, student, grad students. Do, do you please stand? And I hope you've all got the same copy of this that I have. Uh, the plan is that you say it very loud and they turn down my microphone, OK? So we're going to say it together. And shall we start after one, two, three? So one, two, three. I pledge myself and promise. I will respect the hard-won scientific gains of those health professionals in whose steps I walk and gladly share such knowledge as is mine with those who are to follow. I will apply for the benefit of the sick all measures which are required, avoiding twinkling, overtreatment and therapeutic medicine. I will remember that there is an art to health care as well as science and that warmth, sympathy and understanding may outweigh the surgeon's life or the chemist's blood. I will not be ashamed to say I know not, nor will I fail to call in my colleagues when the skills of another are needed for a patient's recovery. I will respect the privacy of my patients, for their problems are not disclosed to me, the world may know, most especially the matters of life and death. I will remember that I do not treat a fever child, a cancerous growth, but a sick human being whose illness may affect the person's family and their economic stability. I will remember that I remain a member of society with special obligations to all my fellow human beings, those of sign mind and body, as well as the infirm. I will not violate this pledge. May I enjoy the art, respected while I live, and remembered with affection thereafter. Thank you very much, doctors. We have now reached the end of the graduation ceremony. Please stand for the exit of the academic procession.
All the people coming in. Uh oh. How do we get down? So many people.